Ladies and gentlemen, the RE CGP has come a long way since its foundation almost 60 years ago. As an academic medical college, we indeed set the standards for the medical specialty of general practice. We write the curriculum, provide education, and hold postgraduate exams, ultimately leading to the fellowship of the college. And clearly, fellowship of the college is the premier qualification of excellence and distinction within the medical specialty of general practice. Its national and international recognition is second to none. And rightly, our fellows are using their post nominals with dignity and pride. Yesterday, at the academic session, you should have seen the smiles of the over 200 new fellows who received their fellowship diploma. They were nervous, they were excited, but I could feel how proud they actually were when they stood next to me for their ceremonial photo with their new diploma. But the RE CGP is doing so much more than setting standards, holding exams, and delivering and offering education. When I'm being asked by my non-GP specialist colleagues what the RE CGP actually does, the answer is not a simple one, because we do a lot. Our strong foundations are built on four pillars, GP education, GP training, GP research, but increasingly GP advocacy. So why have we become so heavily involved in advocating for our profession? Well, the answer to this one is actually quite an easy one, because nobody is doing it for us. That's why the RE CGP Council under President Professor Liz Miles decided to consider an advocacy campaign. That's why this campaign was implemented under the leadership of Dr. Frank Jones, and that's why we continue to advocate on the virtue of general practice under my presidency. Some people say we shouldn't. Some say we should focus on education and training and let others represent general practice. But we've tried this in the past, and it didn't work. GPs were sold out over and over again, and we as a profession did not even realize it. Were we naive or just gullible? Or did we trust the wrong people? It's difficult to say in hindsight, but we won't let history repeat itself. We learn from our history, because after all, that's what an evidence-based academic medical college does. Last year at GP16, I said, effective advocacy is not just running TV campaign after TV campaign. I argued that the RE CGP needed a robust presence in our nation's capital in Canberra. I argued that if we wanted to shape health policy, we need to be much closer to our political decision makers. And we've achieved that within the last 12 months. Some, of course, say, you know, we are now too close to politicians, but I guess sometimes it's hard to get it right for all. Still, when it comes to health policy, our focus is to offer genuine solutions that improve funding and the integrity of our specialty, of our profession, of general practice. As an academic medical college, we explain facts and don't agitate with poorly founded predictions. Explaining facts, offering solution, it would be much easier to complain and agitate from a safe distance. But we on council were not elected to make the easy calls. We don't have time for populism and cheap shots. There is no virtue in complaining. There is in contributing. We are not an industrial lobby group. Pursuing self-interest on the back of members and the communities doesn't really pass a sniff test in 2017. We are also not chasing headlines. But if we really want to have an impact, we want to be taken seriously, we need to advocate stronger for our patients and for our communities. We are calling ourselves specialists in life. 
And that actually resonates really well within the community. But the community is now asking the REC-GP to advocate on matters that make a lot of our members very uncomfortable. Can we just opt out, advocate only when it suits us? How credible would that be? Again, we do not wish to agitate. We do not wish to divide or inflame. We advocate by explaining facts, not by presenting personal biased opinions. Our advocacy is and always will be evidence-based. It's not based on what we like and what we don't like. So when we contribute to the public discourse on marriage equality, end-of-life choices, terminations of pregnancy, healthcare and offshore detention centers, and health impacts of climate change, sitting on the fence is no longer what our members want and no longer anything the community would tolerate. Advocacy is biased. It does not claim to stay neutral. It's not about mediating, facilitating, or negotiating. There is no middle ground. If we are advocating for, then you will be advocating against as well. It's not confrontational, it's not personal, but it might be uncomfortable. However, our advocacy will always be evidence-based. The community has the right to know where the RECGP stands. And for that, we need to have positions. There cannot be much wiggle room. At yesterday's academic session, I advised our new fellows the future of our profession to trust themselves, to rely on their inner compass. I advised them to stay confident and to have courage to make the difficult decisions. I also urge our college to confidently argue a case on issues that may make us all uncomfortable as individual human beings. For that, our college must rely on its biggest asset, our 35,000 fabulous members. We are the largest medical organization in Australia, and I'm proud and humble that I'm allowed to represent our members. We have an incredibly diverse membership based on background, demographics, desires, careers, thinking styles, and I could go on and on and on. We need to celebrate diversity because diversity is an incubator for creativity and high performance. So yes, as an organization, we should foster diversity, but we can't tolerate being divisive. We need to focus on what we share what we have in common, and what is dear to all of us. We need to focus on what we identify with as members of our college. We need to move away from exploiting what sets us apart. And we need to stay united. We need to stay authentic, and we need to stay credible. And we all need to demonstrate solidarity. The RECGP is not perfect. Far from it. But if we give in to the temptation to complain, we should also feel inspired to contribute. We are a very successful member-based organization, but if we want to take the college to the next level, we need to focus much more on our members. We need to focus on trying to uncover the non-obvious needs our members have. We need to ask what it is that would make our members' professional life better? What would our members actually value if the RECGP was able to provide it? Those are the big and challenging questions that need to be answered, and they need to be answered soon. So let's advance this dialogue. Let's progress it here in Sydney. Let's make it meaningful. We all are the RECGP something we should be immensely proud of. So let's celebrate our profession, our college, and our members over the next three days here at GP17. Thank you.